Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Joe Tate. Good afternoon. Dean Overpeck, faculty, staff, Michigan alumni, parents, distinguished guests, and soon to be graduates, thank you for allowing me to address you this afternoon. First off, there's, there's a myth that elected officials love speaking to crowds in long and in extemporaneous fashion. I'm here to, to tell you that that myth is in fact true. <laughs> however, however, my remarks will be brief. I would like to give a special thanks to Professor Joe Arvai, director of the Herb Institute, whom I've had known for over 10 years now, when I was at that other school. Although he could not be here today, I have appreciated his guidance and friendship over the years. For full transparency, that other school, as you know, is Michigan State, where I went for my undergraduate studies. I believe that both, being both an alumnus of U of M and MSU has helped me immensely in politics because <laughs> Because whenever I'm asked about who I would like to win the football game um, against U of M and MSU, my response can legitimately be, I'm rooting for both teams to win. No one can accuse me of not being bipartisan. <laughs> I want to acknowledge also Dean DeRue of the Ross School of Business and Terry Neladov, Managing Director of the Arab Institute. I am truly humbled to be both a part of C's and the Herb family. And to President Schlissel, under whose wisdom and leadership has elevated C's to cut across campus for its mission. In addition to standing up the university's commission on carbon neutrality, President Schlissel has said human influence global climate change is the defining scientific, social, and environmental problem of our age. I could not agree with him more. Graduates, as you know all too well, the decisions we make on climate change will, will ripple through the next generation and beyond. This was most recently made apparent to me just yesterday while packing sandbags to be distributed to homes in my Detroit neighborhood for flood control purposes. I live along the Detroit River, right at the mouth of Lake St. Clair. Through the combination of high water levels of the river and rainfall, record flooding was recorded in Southeast Michigan. This recently led Governor Whitmer to issue a state of emergency for Wayne County. Although the water has now subsided, the probability of flooding in Jefferson Chalmers, my neighborhood, will remain high throughout the summer. I am proud that the University of Michigan is leading the fight to address, adapt, and mitigate against changing climate. Those in this room who will be alumni as of today will be the latest warriors in this challenging battlefield. I know a thing or two about challenges and life's unexpected hardships in collegiate athletics and on the NFL football fields, in Helmand Province, Afghanistan, half a world away from Ann Arbor, in grad school, taking dynamic classes from Professor Yaffe and Professor uh, Reams as well. No hardships in business, and now inside the Capitol Dome in Lansing. Like you, I've been tested in life, and today I would like to briefly share two lessons I have learned and continue to learn before you set off 
on the next phase of your journey. The first lesson is that your map is no good without your compass and vice versa. Let me explain. About 10 years and 30 pounds ago, I had the honor <laughs> to serve in the United States Marine Corps, the smallest of the US Armed Services branches. The Marine Corps serves as a force in readiness capable to respond to a spectrum of crises at a moment's notice anywhere around the globe. The process of becoming a Marine Corps officer is essentially threefold. First, one goes to a commissioning course, what some may call boot camp. Second, Marine Corps officers go through a six month training course called the basic school. And third, officers are sent to their actual job school or military occupational specialty, otherwise known as MOS. Now there's so many more military acronyms, but I'll, I'll spare you them today. I will touch only on the snapshot of time at the basic school. The title of the basic school gives it away, it is where newly minted Marines learn the primary tools of being an officer and leader in the Corps. One exercise all officers are tested on is land navigation, essentially getting from point A to point B using only two tools, a compass and a topographical map. In the basic school, land navigation was a critical component to graduating. After several classroom hours, we will go out to the hilly forest of Marine Corps Base Quantico in Northern Virginia to ensure we knew how to competently operate a map and compass. We would be dropped in the forest by truck or helicopter at a designated location and given coordinates to specific targets which, we usually, which were usually metal boxes. Once we reached the boxes, we would write down the number associated with it on our test sheet. When we completed all the boxes, we would return the test to our instructor for grading. Calibrating the compass to point magnetic north was critical because it gives one a fixed cardinal direction to which you can determine where west, east, and south lie. Equally critical was the map, which oriented one to viable paths, but assisted in avoiding hazardous and dangerous terrain. In order to pass the land navigation course at the basic school, one needed to be able to be proficient at both the compass and the map. You can't fake knowing one or the other. If that was the case, I would still be running around in Virginia somewhere lost. My experience using a comp and map, compass and map is simply an allegory for the framework I use on how to make and implement decisions. For me, my values drive my decision making. The value I have come to prioritize the most is service, specifically service to others and service to craft. This was given to me by my father who as a Detroit firefighter gave his life while on duty in order to protect people in the city that he loved. And although I do not remember him, his act of service still resonates with me to this day. Values guiding direction is just part one. Part two consists of planning and setting a path to meet one's objective, which align and supports one's values. Here's my oversimplified version. My values that I hold dear in service, my current path to fulfill those values are through my work as a rep representative where I use the legislative powers given to me by the residents of House District 2 to improve their quality of life through making, voting, and refining laws. In short, my values serve as my compass pointing me in the right direction, while my map shows me the best path to go in order to meet those objectives. Now, the second lesson I learned that I would like to share is that relationships matter. The English poet John Donne famously wrote, 
No man is an island entire of, of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Change and progress never happens within a silo of just one person. Clarity of judgment and working with others is critical and just as important as technical skills. By the way, I want to assure you that after you've just completed your rigorous graduate school program, the soft skills you have picked up while working in group projects in class and the relationships you built at the campfire and at Sustain the Ball and other places will serve you well going forward. As a legislator, my effectiveness in being the best representative for over 75,000 Michigan residents in my district relies on positive relationship building. I work with 109 independently elected colleagues who bring their own experiences and interests to Lansing. Knowing how to find those commonalities and build relationships is not just a want, it's a need. Applying to your charge as very soon alumni of this school and this institution at this time will require you to know the rules of relationships. The solutions for current and future challenges in the coming decades will require it. You can be the smartest policy wonk but you still have to build relationships. You can be the sharpest on the technical level, but you still have to build relationships. You can be the most passionate and knowledgeable person about how to fix an issue, but you still have to build relationships. Just like C's now cuts across the entire university, you will need to do the same in the world. To wrap up, I want to reemphasize and encourage you to take your map and compass with you as you navigate this world. Also, continue to learn the craft of building relationships. They will serve you and others around you well. And finally, I would be remiss if I didn't say this. If anyone is considering moving to the east side of Detroit or to the Gross Point, Please reach out to me. I'll show you around. I'll take you around and through the neighborhood. We are always looking for good people, good young people. And that invitation goes for faculty and staff as well, if you want. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me the honor of addressing you today. And I look forward to all the change you will create. Thank you.